So what we're talking about today is transgender cultural humility. Um, and the reason we talk about this in terms of cultural humility um, is because the language around trans experience is evolving and changing all the time. Um, so we want to just make it clear that that this is this is language and and the way we talk about trans experience evolves over time. So it's not like you take like one training like this training about um, about transgender issues and then you just know everything. We're just trying to promote you like listening to people who are trans and um, trusting them that they're the experts on their own experience and that to understand that this um, language is something that develops over time. So we're all learning. We're we're still learning. So that's where the humility part comes in, just being open to learn more. And yeah, to keep listening and, and just keep being supportive of all the new things that you learn. Exactly. We're saying, who is this person in front of the room? So if we were in an actual room, <laughs> we're sort of talking about ourselves here. I'm a transgender person. Some of you may not know that. So that might come as a surprise to you because I do look like a man. But I actually was assigned female at birth and I transitioned during my life. As an adult, I transitioned. I did, you know, different kinds of surgery and I became what I look like today. So that's to say that you don't always know. You probably know trans people, but you might not know that they are. I mean, a lot of trans people are really political about their identities. So they're going to tell you that right up front. But a lot of people are just living their lives. And it might not be that they're hiding. I'm not hiding my trans identity. It just doesn't always come up that I tell people. But here I am right now telling you that I am a trans person. Yeah. And this is like a good context in which to do it. It's like not, there's not always built into your life like a good moment to be like, you know, that you are trans. I'm, I'm what, I'm what you would call the opposite of, not the opposite, but cisgender. So I was assigned female at birth and I still identify pretty much as a woman. I'm a little bit androgynous, which means like I kind of present sort of somewhere between like a woman and a man sometimes, but like generally speaking, I identify as cisgender, a little bit kind of gender queer, and we'll talk about what that means. Um, but I was uh, the difference is sort of I was assigned female at birth, and I still sort of um, identify as a woman. Silvio Rivera is a really famous trans woman that you may or may not have heard of. Um, we actually were friends with her, so she's important to, her, to us. But this is a quote from her that just says, people have to understand that people are people. We just want to be ourselves. So a lot of this training is just for us to realize that everyone has their own identity and we need to respect what people tell us that their identity is. And everyone is just trying to live and to be free to be who they are. So we want to be able to be supportive of each other. And one of the wonderful things about SMART is that we like, we sort of make that environment where everybody's supportive of each other. SMART has always been really, really supportive of everyone, no matter what their identity. Um, so we wanna just keep that going. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit now about some definitions, some sort of language um, that we use when talking about um, being transgender or gender identity at all. Okay. So just the basic definition of transgender, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. So what transgender means is it's a term for a person whose gender identity expression and or behavior is different from those behaviors typically associated with their assigned sex at birth. Transgender is a broad term and is good for non-transgender people to use. Trans is shorthand for transgender. And here's a note that says transgender is cor correctly used as an adjective, not a, a noun. So you say transgender people, but not transgenders. You want to say transgender people like you would say, you know, gay people or, um, you know, any sort of thing. You want to prioritize the people part as opposed to saying something like transgenders. Um, okay. Also, like, we're not going to go through a whole lot of the terminology because the terms change a lot. So basically the the safest thing the most respectful thing to say is transgender people so okay a transgender man is a term for yes. yeah. a transgender individual who was assigned female at birth and currently identifies as a man and that would be what i am 
And then a transgender woman is a term for a trans individual who was assigned male at birth and currently identifies as a woman. Um, so that would be like Sylvia Rivera, who we saw in the last slide. All right, and then this is the word that I was using earlier, this word cisgender. So cisgender means someone whose um, self-identity conforms with the gender that corresponds to their sex assigned at birth. So it's basically someone who is not transgender. So again, I was assigned female at birth. I still identify as a woman. That would make me cisgender. Um, so it's just, it's the word you use for people who identify with the sex that they were assigned at birth, okay? All right, so we're throwing around this word sex, like sex assigned at birth. Let's talk about what that means. The basic concept of sex. So sex assigned at birth, either you're assigned a male sex or a female sex. There's also something called intersex, which means that you may have genitalia that's both male and female. And that can come in a myriad different forms. The term used to be hermaphrodite for that, but that no longer is used, uh, an acceptable term. So it's intersex now. Mm -hmm. And um, being intersex is actually quite relatively common. It's something like one in 200 people born have some version of intersex um, identity. So um, again, you've probably met intersex people and you didn't know that either. Um, so that is, that's just like another way to think about sex is that it's not just male and female that there are people that are intersex as well. That's another thing that we're trying to sort of make clear is that none of these things are really um, binary, meaning it, like one thing or the other thing. There's a whole range of the ways that people can be physically and psychologically. So, you know, it's more about trying to be open to just all different kinds of things. Whatever anyone's experience is. Let's talk a little bit about um, gender. So gender is different than sex. Okay. So gender is, so like when I was saying about myself, like that I was assigned female at birth. So that's my sex. All right. Gender, I identify as a woman. So that's my gender. So that's my gender identity. That's how you feel about your gender um, internally. So like you know, do you identify as a man? Do you identify as a woman? Do you identify as something in between? Do you identify as gender queer? It's how you internally feel just about what your gender is. And then gender expression. Okay, so in my case, like as oh, I yeah. said, yeah. I was I was assigned female at birth, but my gender identity, the way mm -hmm. I felt about myself was not that. So my gender identity conflicted with my sex. So then, my gender expression is what I decided to present to the world. That's mm -hmm. why I did transition so that I could appear to the world the way I felt inside. So gender expression is how others see you, how you present yourself to the world. Yeah, like a lot of times when we're talking about gender or sex, it's like very either or, like you're either a man or a woman or you're either you know, female or male. And we want to complicate that a little bit and say like, there are actually a lot of things in between. So um, we use this concept of like fluidity, which means this basically means that, that there are many things in between that your gender can sort of develop and change over time. Uh, so being transgender doesn't mean that you want to necessarily conform to this idea of man or woman. Um, so lots of people, especially you might hear younger people using this language, use um, words like they're gender queer, they're gender fluid, they're bi gender, tri gender, something like that. And that's just to sort of say, you know, that they feel like they're a gender that is not um, woman or man, but is something else. There's something called the gender binary, which is when you, it's like really specifically male or female. And a lot of times people use that against trans people. It's yeah. like, you know, there's not no such thing as anywhere in between, but there is. And so a, a lot of times you, you might hear people wanting to use other pronouns, like instead of being called, you know, he or she, they want to be called they. And sometimes I don't know, you know, that can be sort of hard to keep track of, but what they're trying to say is that they actually don't feel like they fit into either a male or a female category. And there, you might have actually experienced that in your own life, mm -hmm. that 
there are certain things about you that you don't feel are specifically one or the other. And you're allowed to be able to feel those feelings and to express those things. So this is just about being free, you know, to feel, just to feel like a person that, a, a unique person that is made up of a lot of different parts. And that you get to be authentic about those parts. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to talk about sort of what sexual orientation is. Okay, so just remember, like, this is the thing. There, there, people confuse these terms. A lot of times they think that sex and gender, we're talking about the same thing. That's why we're trying to define it. It might be, you know, you might not be able to, like, keep all of this in your head right now, but we want just this to become more familiar to you that these are different things. Mm -hmm. So sexual orientation is not the same as gender or sex. Exactly. So sexual orientation is talking about who you're attracted to. So who you're attracted to sexually, romantically. Um, so these words might be a little bit more familiar. So um, you know, heterosexual, so someone who's attracted to people of the opposite sex, the opposite sex. Um, homosexuality, like if you're attracted to people that are the same gender as you. Um, bisexuality, you're attracted to people of, that are of all genders, basically, which is a similar thing to pansexuality. And then asexuality, which isn't talked about that much, is that you're not actually attracted to anyone of any gender. Um, so these are all Pansexuality is different. Pansexuality is you're attracted to anyone like without basis in gender. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you can be attracted to anyone. Um, and so this is this is like we're just remember when we're talking about sexual orientation, we're not talking about sex or gender. What we're talking about is who you're attracted to. Right. And also, OK as a trans person, you can be any of these things. Just because you're a trans person doesn't mean that you're automatically, you know, attracted to someone like say, I'm a trans man, that I would be attracted to women because I transitioned to a man. I could also be attracted to men. I could be any of these things. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of, like we were talking about earlier, there are a lot of trans men that are attracted to men. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it, one doesn't make you know, one doesn't determine the other, you know. So where do we fit? I fit, you fit, any of us. Okay, so this is, we're just going to kind of review. So, you know, as I said initially, my sex assigned at birth was female, but my gender identity was male. So as a child, I knew this. This is not something um, that all transgender people experience, but you might have heard like in the news a lot. There's a lot of controversy around whether or not people want to support trans children. I was one of those. I was someone as a child that knew that I was trans. This isn't the case for everyone. Some people like go through, you know, until their adulthood when they actually then start having a different sense of themselves. But for me, I knew from the very second that I had self-awareness that I wanted to be a boy. It was my like driving force of my childhood. But, um, you know, the, the sort of things that have become easier for trans people in terms of support and at least recognition that it's a real thing and that medical care has, you know, started to become something available even to trans children. But when I was a child, this, that wasn't the case. So, my parents were not supportive of that. They didn't really understand. They do now, my mother does now, my father has died, but my mother does understand now, but she didn't when I was a child. So it was difficult for me, but over time, when I became more independent, I was able to find support. So I actually didn't transition until I was much more of an adult. I've, I transitioned about 16 years ago, I think. So that's how long I've lived in this way. But a lot of people do it much sooner in their lives. So my gender expression is now this, which is different than it was when I was a child. <laughs> and you wanted it, to, you, but you, when you were a child, you wanted to be mm -hmm. a boy. I yeah. did. Yeah. Um, and then when, like we were saying about sexual orientation is like, 
So for anyone, you know, your sex, your um, gender identity doesn't determine your sexual orientation. You can still be attracted to whoever or no one. Um, so that's what you're talking about with these concepts of sexual orientation. So, you know, you could be, you know, assigned male at birth, identify as a woman and be attracted to women. That's as legitimate as any other identity. Um, you could be, you know, assigned female at birth, uh, identify as a woman and be attracted to men. That's legitimate too. So like what, the thing that we're trying to say here is that all of these things, they work they work sort of independently of each other. Everybody has this really like unique mixture <laughs> of like, of um, sex. sex, gender, gender identity, identity, and gender, gender, ex expression. gender expression and sexual orientation too. Um, so also we're, what we're saying too, because we're talking about trans people in this, but everyone has this, yeah. you have, this. you have, this. you have a gender expression, you have a gender identity, you have a sexual orientation, you have a sex, mm -hmm. every single person has these things. It's just transgender people have one that isn't the same as assigned <laughs> at birth. Yeah. And the thing is, I think a lot of times, like if you fit into, um, the sort of some of the ex more expected categories that you don't think you maybe don't think about your gender identity as much or like you don't think about your sexual orientation as much because it 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 feels like you know society supports it so you don't you don't have to think about it as much but just know every single one of us falls on this chart somewhere mm -hmm. like every single one of us has each one of these things in a very specific way so it's not just trans people have a gender identity you do too like everybody does and a sexual orientation and a gender expression and it's interesting to think about too it's a really interesting thing to think about especially if you haven't thought about it very much before and also sometimes your gender expression you can it can be it can change over mm -hmm. time or it can it, you can be someone that might you know be enjoy wearing different kinds of clothes or it doesn't necessarily none of it is fixed and also there's a there's a way like some of you might know about you know things on tv like rupaul's drag mm -hmm. race or something where there are you know male identifying people that perform and dress as as female and that isn't necessarily the same thing as transgender. It, in fact, probably rarely yeah. is. But those are performers. Mm -hmm. Those are not trans people. Those are drag queens. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's different. And trans people. I, one of the differentiations there is that trans people are living their whole lot. Like this is not. They're not doing this for entertainment. They're not doing this you know like as a like they're doing it it's it's their internal like way they feel it's not something that they're sort of putting on as entertainment like drag queens are although it can happen that trans people are afraid to present yeah because of discrimination that they're afraid to live as their their true gender mm -hmm. so a lot of times they might secretly try to be in places where they can dress or present mm -hmm. in ways that they feel most That's comfortable true. but in the world like if they have a job they might have to not be able to do that so part of like trying to fight for equality and acceptance is about allowing people to be their whole lives who they are and not have to hide and feel afraid that somebody is going to hurt them mm -hmm or that they'll lose their jobs. But transgender people don't have the same protections in, in the country as other people do. Uh, different states are better about it than others. New York is good, mm -hmm. but across the country, there are many places that can fire people, you know, on the or not give them housing or all kinds of discriminatory things. Just for being trans. Just for because they're trans. Yeah. Okay, so this is kind of what we're getting into talking about is discrimination against trans people so we have this term favoritism so there's privileged people who who fit into the gender binary um experience more privilege than people who don't so like um because our society has gotten so sort of hung up on this idea of you're either a man or a woman um people who who seem to fit into that model of one or the other have the privilege of of society support and society you know like they don't they're not um uh running into the same kind of discrimination 
based on their gender that um, some trans people might be. Although, I mean, this is another factor that we're going to talk about, yeah. that there is misogyny, yeah. that women are definitely yeah, yeah. Um, not as privileged as men yeah. in the world. So, but with trans people, there's definitely these, these statistics of increased homelessness, suicide, unemployment, and violence against them. And trans people of color experience the most violence and discrimination, and specifically trans women of color. And you can imagine it's where a lot of, so there's a convergence of things in that identity that all of those things are discriminated against. Yeah being a person of color, being a woman, and being a trans person, those three things really heighten the likelihood that this person will experience severe discrimination. And violence, mm -hmm. yeah. There are many, many, many people that are murdered that are trans women of color every year. Hundreds, and then that's not even like necessarily everyone who's been counted. Um, so yeah, and it's, it's the proportion of that is, overwhelmingly trans women of color. One other thing I can say in this in this instance, there's there's a difference too. Trans men have a much easier time in the world than trans women by and large. I can't say that for every single person, but in a general sense, because you're transitioning to male, which is a privileged place, you already are going to have an easier time in the world. And for some reason, the world is more accepting of trans men for that reason yeah. than it is of trans women. And there's another thing about um, being able to pass. We're not really talking about that term in this, mm -hmm. but that just means that the world sees you, like the world sees me as male. Nobody looks twice at me. I walk around, everybody thinks that I'm a man. But that's not the case for everyone. Some people, some trans people never will actually be someone that somebody might not look twice at and say, wow. what gender is that? Or that doesn't seem right. Or, you know, that people question. So that in itself is a, is a cause for discrimination. Yeah. If, if, if you're someone who people can't sort of easily categorize again, because this, the gender binary has become something that's so sort of um, is ingrained in our minds. And you might have heard too in the news, there's a, a lot of controversy about bathrooms and things like that, you know, whether or not, you know, trans women should be able to use women's rooms and all of those things. It's just people being afraid of mm -hmm. something different and they, they don't know how to, how to be open. So we just want to spread awareness and help people be more open. It's fine for trans women to use bathrooms public bath, public female bathrooms, that's where they feel the safest. Mm -hmm. And also just to tell you personally, trans people are extremely nervous about using public bathrooms. It's not a fun experience for anyone. And so, you know, try to be supportive. If you ever see anyone that looks lost in a bathroom, just let them be and let them try to have the best experience they possibly can. They're not trying to hurt you. Um, so this is just sort of a kind of sad statistic, um, and and it shows why it's so important for you to be supportive of trans people. So the suicide attempt rate for the general population is less than five percent, but for trans people, it's um, forty one percent. So it's way way higher. And you can imagine, you know, the lack of support sort of leads people to think, you know, that they there's not a place for them here. Um, and that's really sad. And that's one of the things that we're trying to sort of combat by saying, you know, we want to have um, as much support for trans people as possible. So you get to be like this sort of force for being supportive. Like you get to make the world look the way that you want it to look. Like you get to work towards that. And that's the best thing is yeah. like, you get to be supportive of people and just be the, an example of how to do that too. Um, and the thing too, I mean, with parents, like, I mean, there's studies about this. There's actual like scientific studies is like kids that have support, kids who are, are queer or trans or anything that have supportive parents have so, so much better outcomes in life. Like one of the, the greatest, most wonderful things that a um, trans or gay kid can have is supportive parents. You might know who Laverne Cox is. She's, she's a famous trans woman. That's the other thing. I mean, trans visibility is increasing. Um, 
uh, Elliot Page is an act actor who has recently transitioned to a trans man and is in the news a lot, but um, which is a good thing. So, okay, this is the quote from Laverne Cox. It is revolutionary for any trans person to choose to be seen and visible in a world that tells us we should not exist. So the thing about, you know, the whole transgender controversy is people are actually trying to tell trans people that they're not real that for some reason they don't believe a person telling them this is my experience of my life and they're acting as if it's some sort of pretense or something mm -hmm. somebody's doing to be subversive or to somehow cause trouble and it's it's really not and the idea that someone else can tell a person that they don't exist is a horrible 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 bigotry and just think about that for yourself you know if you were trying to um, tell someone your own experience or or how you feel about yourself and somebody told you that that just wasn't true um, you're the expert on yourself each trans person is the expert on their self um, and the idea that you know we're trying to anyone's trying to make you sort of feel like you can't exist the way that you're, you're, it, your existence is impossible is, um, is really violent and wrong. A lot of cultures, trans people are thought of as like shamans, mm -hmm. as like, you know, leaders, spiritual leaders. So a lot of cultures revere trans people, but Western culture has not followed suit really. And a lot of that has to do with like, I mean, a lot of, if you go back to like traditional or, or indigenous cultures, mm -hmm. like they, they absolutely were sort of um were very honoring of trans identities it's when western cultures came like european cultures came and colonized other places that they they brought with them this like you know fear and hatred of trans people so it's something that comes from colonized people not from like you know indigenous, indigenous cultures people. you might have heard of like two spirit people yeah those are trans people yeah those are within native cultures like um, two spirit can refer to trans people like just somebody actually might not want you to know yeah. or they might tell you secretly and not want mm -hmm. you to share with other people and it's mainly because they're trying to protect themselves yeah. so that's everyone's prerogative you don't have to be out to be yeah. you know real if you know that someone's trans or if someone comes out to you as trans um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they want to answer questions about their body. It's just like with you. It's like you don't necessarily want to tell everybody your sort of medical business. Like everybody wants to feel free mm -hmm. and you'll you'll risk things for that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, one society being more supportive of, of all of us is just is the goal for all of us. Yeah.